Hi, I'm Tony Northrup from Microsoft Press. Because not everyone has the hardware necessary, I'm going to walk you through the practice at the end of Lesson 1, Chapter 7. In this practice, we're going to configure our domain controller, a computer called DCSRV1, to act as a RADIUS server. We will then configure a wireless access point to authenticate to this RADIUS server, and finally we'll configure a Windows 7 computer to connect to the wireless access point and authenticate using WPA Enterprise. This computer is already configured as a domain controller. However, we will also need to add the certificate services role. You can simply set, select the default settings. Next we need to create the wireless users group. I'll drill down in server manager under the domain controller role. Right click here and select a new group. I'll name this wireless users. And I'll make it a universal security group. Next we'll create a user account that the wireless user can use to authenticate to the domain. In the real world you'd probably just add the wireless users account to the wireless users group. Now I'm going to add that to the wireless users group. Now I'm going to add the wireless computer account to the wireless users group. In this case, the computer account is Hartford. For this to work, I have would have already had to add the computer to the domain. Now we're ready to add the network policy and access services roles. So go to roles and then click add roles. Now I select Network Policy and Access Services. So on this page I'm going to select the Network Policy Service role and Routing and Remote Access. Now I just need to install it. With NPS installed, I next need to configure NPS to allow my wireless access points to act as RADIUS clients. So I'm selecting NPS here. Um, from this list, from the standard configuration list, I'm going to configure it as a RADIUS server for 802.1x wireless or wired connections. Now I just need to configure it. This is going to be a wireless network. I'm going to add a couple of wireless clients. And specify a shared secret, which is simply a static password that I'm creating. I'm actually going to add a second wireless access point because I have two wireless routers. Moving on to the next page, I'm going to use Microsoft uh, Protected EAP, PAP. Now, on this page, I'm going to specify the group that I created to provide wireless access, wireless users. The remaining steps provide some more complex configuration that I don't need right now, so I'm just finishing up the wizard. One last step is to register the server in the Active Directory. wouldn't be allowed to authenticate users until it was registered. So I right-click NPS and then click Register Server in Active Directory. And I'll confirm that. So now we can take a look and verify our configuration. I'm expanding NPS and then selecting Radius Clients and Servers and the Radius Clients nodes. Here you can see WAP1 and WAP2. These are my two wireless access points and the specified IP addresses. Next I'll look at the network policies. Here you can see the network policy I just created, secure wireless connections. And finally, I can check the accounting node. Um, this is the log file that Radius is going to store events in. I can configure it by clicking this link and selecting which of the types of events that I want to log. Now my RADIUS server is configured correctly, I need to configure the wireless access point. So this is the administration page for my wireless access point. You 
we'll have a different tool because every tool pretty much has their own configuration settings. I'm going to change the SID to Contoso and then I'm going to configure it for WPA EAP. It might also be called WPA Enterprise. I'll go ahead and select WPA2 because that's a little bit more secure. I'll type in my shared secret here and I'm going to specify my radius server IP address. I only have the one radius server, but if I had another, this particular router, this particular wireless access point allows me to configure more than one. My router requires me to reboot, so I'll go ahead and let that happen now. Next I need to configure the Group Policy Management Console. I'm just working with the default domain policy because it's a lab environment, but in the real world you'd probably have policies for your wireless computers and you would edit your wireless users domain policy. So this is located in default domain policy, computer configuration, Windows settings, security settings, wireless network. So now I can create a new network policy. I'm going to click add here and create an infrastructure network. I will call it Contoso and I will specify the SID as being Contoso also. Clicking add here. Uh, if I click the security tab I can see that it uses WPA2 Enterprise. Um, I can select either AES or TK IP encryption. Uh, just remember that I specified TKIP here, so I'll, I'll go ahead and configure the router to support either form of encryption. And I'll let that reboot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go with the default of AES, but know that you might have to configure that on your router as well. Um, on the authentication mode, notice that either users or computers can authenticate. In this case, I've configured both a user account and a computer account with appropriate privileges, so either one would work. I forgot one step in here, so I'm going to open it up and edit it again. And going back to the security tab, I'm going to edit the settings for Microsoft PEAP. And enable single sign-on. Next I need to configure auto-enrollment for certificate services. This is a part of the certificate services role that I installed at the beginning of this. So that's located under Windows Settings, Security Settings, Public Key Policies. Editing the auto enrollment. You can see that it's already enabled. This is probably from a previous setting, but in your environment it might not already be enabled. So just double check that that's configured. I'm also going to check the Certificate Path Validation Settings. Just need to make sure that uh, Define These Policy Settings is selected, and it is. Double check that in your environment as well. So now my wireless access point and my server are configured. I just need to connect the wireless computer to the wireless access point. It'll be authenticated directly to the domain. This is my Windows 7 client. It's a member of the domain, and as you can see, I can connect to the Contoso network automatically. I already have sufficient privileges. So the benefit of this is that users can connect to your wireless networks securely using both encryption and authentication without them needing to remember any passcodes or type of password other than their standard uh, single sign-on domain username and password. Works really easy. For more of this you can check out the Microsoft Press 70-642 training kit um, and my technology blog vistaclues.com. This is Tony Northrup. Thanks.